I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Huawei MateBook D14 laptop and in this video I'm gonna take you over how you can open it up and how you can do your own service, repaste and cleaning up the whole fan system or the cooling system. This one applies for any Intel or AMD CPU to be much the same way opening is almost identical. This one is a Ryzen 5 CPU which is a 3500U model, 8 gig RAM. And in this one, while you do your upgrade, your if you're doing your own repaste this and that, you don't have to worry about any files getting lost or anything. If you're not modifying the operating system, the model for this one is an NBL-WAQ9R Huawei, and this is a D14 model, and it's a AMD processor. So let's get into it and let's get open it up and keep this video short. I'm gonna go over the tools and the stuff that I'll be using. First thing first is an alcohol. I'll be using an isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol, 95% plus. Make sure do not use any 75% uh, or anything like that. It will make a shortage on the motherboard. You will need an opening tool. I'll be using an iFixit screwdriver set. These are one of the best screwdriver set out there. These are made out of S2 class steel and they will last you many years. We're going to be using a torque number five. If you get the pro set from this tool set, you, they will include you in opening tools and few tweezers. If not, get the simple set. And for the opening tools, I'll be using a guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. You will need a curve or straight tweezers. In the sharp pointy ones so we're going to be using these ones i like the curved ones are really easy to use the curved tweezers with these two on hand and the last thing would be a uh, second last thing a workshop towel one sheet of the workshop towel and your favorite thermal paste for this one i'll be using an arctic uh, mx4 these are very good if you want to go over the board and overkill go with the thermal grizzly cryonaut but this one is way, is still very good. All right, with this on hand, let's get started. Power of the laptop, flip it upside down, and we're gonna remove all the screws on the bottom cover that you see, the two in the back mid, all the in the front row, all of them. It's starting one from one corner, and go ahead and remove all of them. Also, if you guys like my videos and you wanna support the channel, you can do that by clicking the like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it, it will be a great motivation for me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. I'll appreciate that. All these screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mismatching these screws. Just keep them in one pile. These are chrome screws, but they are kind of dull, so they're not shiny. Okay, we're gonna keep these ones in one pile. Now, to opening the cover here, Simply all you need to do is to grab the opening tool and we're going to start from the back in the corner right here You want to stick the guitar pick between the bottom cover Somewhere there you have to manage it to squeeze it between the bottom cover right there Just like that Okay, once you have it in there you just want to twist it backward and you want to hit those clicks Those are the clicks that are getting loose you want to work yourself all around in the front end all the way to the front corner. You're not scratching or anything like that, so don't worry about it. I have the camera in front of me, I can't see. So I'm gonna put my finger in there. You can use two guitar picks if you want. See, I'm just snapping it right there. Go corner. Go back and the rest should come out pretty easy. All right. Let me see if I didn't push any screws anywhere. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I didn't push any. Move them away. All right. So now we're gonna grab the cover, bring it up, wiggle it around, and you should release the bottom cover. You can take it outside and clean it up, clean up the dust in here. With a toothbrush, again, that's another tool that you will need. A used or new toothbrush. So clean up the bottom mesh, 
It's kind of weird. I don't know why the dust mesh is supposed to be over the fan, which is right over here, not in here. Because the air gets sucked through here and to the back end of the laptop. So the, this dust mesh should have continued all the way here. But anyway. All right, down here we see the big battery. And we see the fan system and captain tape, which is all over the place. They put the captain tape so you don't see through the mesh, the cables. So it's a, uh, I mean, captain, these are called gaffers tape, not captain tape. So we're gonna remove that tape over the Wi Fi board. First, we need to remove the battery. It's very important to remove the battery. We need to disconnect it from here. To disconnect the battery, you need to use a plastic uh, plier that they are included in the opening tool. To remove the battery connector right there, all you need to do, there's a tiny clips at the side in here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a tiny clips right in here. You want to lift it up from the side, bring it upward like that, and the clip will come out. You have to maybe you have to use a little bit of more force to pull it up, but you want to grab it from the corners and just pull it upward. Now that we have disconnected the battery, we need to uh, you don't need to remove it completely, just get it disconnected. We need to remove the cooling system. First, we're going to start with the fan. And with the Wi-Fi cable. To pull the Wi-Fi cable, just grab it from the side here and wiggle around and pull it upward. Wiggle around and pull it upward. And untangle the cables all around the fan. Just go up, down, up, down to the side. There we go. Now we need the speaker cables. You don't want to yank on the cables. That's why they have this kind of lens uh, corner sticking out in here. You want to pull it backward using that corner. Wiggle around and there we have it. Now you want to untangle this cable too. You want to remove the fan cable. Again, this fan cable, you do not want to pull cables. So what you want to do in here is to put your tweezers beside the jack and wiggle around and pull the connector outward. All right, with those uh, removed, now we're going to start switching to a Phillips number zero. We're going to remove the two screws on the fan, one in this side and one on the other end. All right, and you can go ahead and lift up the fan, bring it backward, and look at all this hair that is in there. This guy, this client probably had lots of cat or something, or dog. All right, so we do need to remove all this trash from here. You can take the fan outside and use a toothbrush to clean up the fans in here and blow some compressed air through here and clean it up. I'll leave that to one side. To remove the heat sink, you can do either just clean it up right here with a toothbrush to not repaste. If you just want to clean up the dock, dock system, the fan system, just get up to here and then put the screws back in and you're done. But if you want to repaste, you want to continue removing the Four screw that hold the heatsink to the CPU. All right, remove this four screws, and you want to lift up the heatsink from the corner. Just wiggle it around. Don't yank it from this side, otherwise you're gonna bend the tubing. Bring it up, and there we have it. Look at how much thermal paste they have put in here. Like the excess, the die is right in the middle, right here. And look at the excess that they have in here. And people like, oh my god, you're doing an overkilling with that thermal paste. Doesn't matter how much you put, it will just spread around, it will go all around. So there's no such a thing like an overkill with the thermal paste. And this is the, they did in a company, it's not like somebody did it. Alright, so we're going to clean it up. So we're going to grab an alcohol, a little bit of the workshop towel. We're going to soak it in here. And... We are going to wipe it. You don't need to clean up lots of thermal paste around the jeep in the, the die. Leave them there. As long as you clean the crystal die, you're fine. The thermal pads are 0.1 millimeters and 0.2 millimeters thermal pads in case you want to replace it, but it's absolutely not necessary to replace the thermal pads. They're not going to affect any performance or anything like that. They don't actually get that hot to remove the or replace them. They can last you many years, even with the stock thermal pads. Do not put any big thermal pads, otherwise you're gonna push away the heat sink from the Jeep. 
the CPU and you want to get a horrible uh, result. All right, now that we clean it up, I'm going to take it outside for a second and clean up the fan with a toothbrush and clean up the duct system in here. And I'll be back. All right, I'm back. There we have the fan cleaned up and we have the heat sink cleaned up. So right now what we're going to do, we want to grab our thermal paste and we're going to put a line in the middle, just a tiny line in the middle. Okay. You can put a little bit less or you can put... Is, more is better than less, so don't worry. If you put less, it might not cover the whole dye. You can do a spread around or you can do a tiny line. If you do a line, it is still going to go uh, both ways, so don't worry about it. For example, I put a line in there. I'm going to put the thermal the heat sink on just for you guys. I'm going to do this. So you're going to put it evenly on, and once you cross screw them, I'm going to push down on the screws in here. All right, there, right there. So evenly in the middle and push down. Let's lift it up and see how it's spread around or not. And it's still like kind of very fresh and it's stuck in there. So there we go. You can see it's covered the whole dye, everything. So align is fine. Once you put a thermal paste, you do not want to uh, lift up the heatsink. Otherwise, you have to redo the thermal paste. Because otherwise you're going to get a horrible result. So every time you lift up the heat sink, you must repaste the heat sink. So I do this for you guys so you guys can see it for those people that are like, oh, it's not going to cover. Align is very good and is effective. There we go. Put a line in there. Grab the heat sink. Bring it over, align it, and drop it there, and put the four screws for the heat sink right in place. Make sure you always cross screw them. They do actually have a little number on them. You can follow the number, it says one, two, three, four, or you can do four, three, two, one, as long as you cross screw them. And the reason for cross screwing is to spread the thermal paste evenly over the die. So if you do only one side and then you come to this side, you're pretty much pushing the thermal paste to one side. Uh, so it might not get, it will get, but it might not get all over the die. Next is to grab the fan. I'm just going to run the Wi-Fi cable in on the air. It's easy for me to do it while in the air. Okay. I'm going to do it halfway through only has to go right under the heatsink right there. You want to leave a little bit of room for for the hinge when it's opening so it doesn't pull the uh, Wi-Fi cable. Just leave a little bit of curve right there. So right now I'm going to put the Wi-Fi cable right down under this side. Pretty much you just have to zigzag around the fan. There we go. Zigzag the speaker cable too. Put the jack in. The jack only goes in one way, so there's no, you can't put it the wrong way, so it only goes in one way. If you try to put it the other way around, it's not going to go through. So pretty much. I'm going to try to tangle this one nicely around and pass through here. You don't have to tangle around the thing as long as it goes, it's not touching over the fan, you're fine. Grab the cables and just put them on top of the Wi-Fi here and just push it down and it will clip in. They just kind of snap on clips. I forgot to put the fan cable. Make sure you do not forget to put the fan cable. It's the same thing as a speaker cable. You want to slide it right inside the jack. I'm going to remove the cables. So don't forget the fan cable. Okay. Now we're going to do the Wi Fi cable. And there we have it. All right, once we have this one, let's put the two screws for the fan. 
And the last thing down here would be to put the battery connector in place. Make sure it's straight aligned over and just squeeze it right in there. Make sure it kind of snaps in. You can put this gaffer's tape on top of the board that you removed. I don't know, I don't remember which way it was, but doesn't matter as long as you put it on top. It doesn't, this is for the static and uh, for the looks only. So when you look through here, it doesn't look ugly, shiny Wi Fi board. All right, once we have everything down here, now I'm gonna turn on the laptop to see if it works. So it might take you five to 10 seconds to boot up because we disconnected the battery, so don't panic. Be patient. I'm pressing the corner so I hear that tiny click. So before powering on, I'm gonna quickly go ahead and switch back to Torque 5. It is Torque 5, right? Yeah, Torque 5 and put the screws for the corners. And then I can come back after the video and put the rest of the screws on the bottom cover. If you see any opening between the bottom cover and the top cover, just pinch them hard. It will just snap in place. So you don't have to put all the screws to power on as long as you put the four screws in the corner to keep the cover in place. You're more than fine. I don't know if it has any battery charge left in, on the laptop. This one is kind of dirty on the screen. The, all those crumbs from this keyboard, it just fell down. So kind of clean it up. All right, so let's go ahead and power it on and see how it goes. I see a flash on the screen. Second flash, probably doing a RAM check. And there we go, there we have Huawei. So it did few flashing, we probably doing RAM memory check. And it's starting, I'm back in the windows. And that's all set. I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out. If it did, don't forget to click that like and subscribe. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just gonna finish up putting up the bottom screws.